castles are amazing. This castle is incredible as despite being over 600 years old, it has been used to defend the country right up until the Second World War. It also has a fantastic setting on the cliff edge by the River Dart. Amazingly, in medieval times, it was also the home to a massive defense chain. More about that later in the video. I aim to visit and make short videos on many castles across the country, in addition to my regular ones. So please like, subscribe, and click the alerts bell for future releases. Brought to you by Eclectic Experience, change seen through images. Be sure to stay to the end to hear all the magnificent details. This is Dartmouth Castle, Devon, England, roughly between Exeter and Plymouth. It is situated on the River Dart, next to the town of Dartmouth. It is a grade one listed building. What we see here today is a real mix from the ruined medieval to the mid 20th century. This was an important location. This is a plan of the castle as seen from an information board. It is a reconstruction of how it might have looked in 1550. This is a map from the guidebook showing the current layout of the castle, which we will use to move around the site. We will start with the original castle. This is a view of the oldest remaining part of the castle. The original walls and towers were started in 1388 and were designed to stop enemy ships passing towards the town and to defend itself should it be attacked from the ground. We can see the high wall and tower. Being at the end point of the cliff, it was a strong defensive position with a sea on nearly three sides. The person who built this was what was known as a merchant adventurer or privateer. Before there was any real navy, the government used to encourage boat owners to attack and steal from the boats and countries England was at war with, France at this time. This was John Hawley, born in 1350 and died in 1408. So famous, he held the position of mayor no less than 13 times and has a brass plaque in the Church of St. Saviour in Dartmouth, where he is buried, shown here. Inside the castle grounds is the Church of St. Petrox. We can see here, it stems from a religious building that existed long before the castle was built. St. Petrox is actually the name of a 6th century Welsh prince who turned missionary. The graveyard was added by 1600. Inside the church, there are several brass memorials. Money was generally spent on the castle when war was imminent. This certainly happened around 1539 when Henry VIII was expecting an invasion. It was also the time that an additional fort was added nearer the town called Bayard's Cove Fort, which I prepared another video on, see the link at the end. This is the gun tower. On the top floor of the tower, we see battlements and a further small tower. This roof was designed for the use of handguns and longbows. Notice also how on the land side, the wall is higher than the water side. This is because the defenders will be vulnerable from attack from the land due to the high ground above. The higher wall also gives more protection. This is the roof turret. Walking up the steps, we can enter the turret, look through the window and see the great vantage position this castle has. From here, we also get a good view of the river mouth. Going downstairs, we come to a large open area and the site of an important mechanism, the harbour chain. The harbour chain was literally a chain laid across the river. It would force enemy boats to stop so they could then be shot at from close range, both from this castle and from Kingsweir Castle across the river. If we look at the square hole in the wall, this is where the chain entered the castle and was tightened as necessary. The chain was only used in times of war as it was difficult and expensive to keep it in place. To install it required boats with rollers 
to be anchored in the fast flowing water and a lot of effort to lift it manually. The tension would also have to be constantly adjusted with the tides. This is a picture from the guidebook demonstrating how it was operated. The chain was recorded as being in store in 1661 and a short length identified in 1715 so it was almost certainly not used after this time. Interestingly, although a chain was not used, a floating boom was put across the River Dart during the two world wars of the 20th century to stop enemy vessels from entering the channel. The Lighthouse It was only when I checked the guidebook that I realised that the high tower in the middle of the castle was in fact a lighthouse. In the Middle Ages, it was not uncommon for the priest of the Harbour Chapel to maintain a light on the church tower to help guide ships. This might have happened here, but there is no record. In 1857, this lighthouse was finished and a fixed red light displayed. However, it was only used until 1864 as there was a design flaw. It couldn't actually be seen by ships coming from the southwest. So it was replaced by one on the opposite side of the River Dart. Dartmouth Point Battery This part of the site has been rebuilt multiple times as gun technology has improved and required different buildings. The gun tower looks out over the bay. The exact dating of when it was built is not known and it could have been built on the remains of a tower from the original castle. But by the end of the 1400s, it formed a purpose-built gun tower, the oldest known purpose-built coast artillery fort in Britain. As we can see here, the castle has a thorough display on the history of guns that could have been used at this castle. The gun crews were mainly volunteers from the town and it is worth noting how potentially dangerous this was. The castle contained enough gunpowder stored in the magazine to blow itself up completely. So extreme measures were taken not to create any sparks and in the procedures for handling the gunpowder. If we go through the guard room entrance and down the staircase, we can see some of the measures. On entering on the right, here there is a narrow passage that at first seems to have no purpose. It runs the whole length of the magazine, but its name, the lighting passage, explains what it is. There are glazed windows that allow light into the magazine handling gunpowder and exploded materials. This meant that naked flames, in a time before electric light, were shielded from the gunpowder, but that those working in this area could see what they were doing. Walking down the next corridor, the main magazine, we can see some of the lengths gone to to prevent explosions. The first room was used in the 1860s for soldiers so they could change out of uniform and put on magazine clothes. These were pocketless, made of a fine weave so gunpowder could not get caught in the fibres and they were paired with canvas shoes, all for safety and to prevent sparks. Here, in the gunpowder magazine, we can see the other side of the window from the lighting corridor. It provides a dull but usable light. Moving to the 20th century. Interestingly, the English Heritage Gift Shop occupies the site of one of the World War II guns. The big window looking out to sea used to be the opening for the gun. Military action. Dartmouth with its fort and castles was heavily protected against attack from the sea. During troubled times, the town and castles were regularly improved as it was a major port and therefore a military target. Dartmouth was attacked during the English Civil War, not from the sea, but from the land where its defences were a lot weaker. Dartmouth supported the parliamentarians, so was a royalist target. Prince Morris, the king's nephew, in 1643 led a royalist force that laid siege to the town for a month before taking it. To improve the defences, the royalists built new gun forts overlooking Dartmouth and Kingswear. However, in 1646, under the cover of darkness, 
the parliamentarians carried out a swift assault and took back the town, including the castle. The castle passed to the Ministry of Works after World War II and then eventually to English Heritage, who run it today. It is an interesting site with lots of history and well worth a visit. There is a shop and cafe on the site with public toilets just outside. There is also a small car park in front of the castle. However, if you are up to it, you can get a good idea of the castle's position and relevance by walking along the waterfront from Dartmouth. You also get to see Bayard's Cove Fort on the way. This is a great castle to visit. I'm visiting castles across the UK and we're regularly posting new videos. So please like, subscribe and click the alerts bell for future releases. Thank you for watching Eclectic Experience change seen through images.